drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hello students welcome to dbdevel.com your online gateway to the world of invaluable knowledge so let's continue with our discussion now over here students an important point in the formula fn is equal to p multiplied by 1 plus i to the power of n the term 1 plus i to the power of n is also known as a compounding value factor for a lump sum for dollar one it means that as i told earlier also that there are two methods of solving such questions or there are two conceptual methods first one is a conceptual method which i discussed right now in which it looked a bit elaborated and second one is a ready reckoner it is a ready-made solution wherein you will come across uh, some future some annuity tables or some future value tables there is a future value for a lump sum future value for uh, annuity calculation, present value for a lump sum, present value for, uh, for annuity calculations. So those tables are a ready reckoner, they are a ready made supplement to you wherein the value of one dollar, the value of one dollar has been given by the way of increase but it shows that how exactly one dollar has increased against a given range of interest rate against a given range of a number of years so you are getting a ready-made value of one dollar across various kinds of eyes and across various various number of years so all we need to do is that in order to calculate the future value we already know what is the present value against whose the future values we are trying to ascertain so the present value is known to us we simply refer to the tables and we simply pick uh, uh, we just cherry pick the i which we want to solve it for or the i for which we want the p to increase and then we refer to, uh, refer to the n number of years against which uh, for the number of years we, we want to compound our present value we, we take the figure from there and we multiply it with the p so that is a simple shortcut formula but behind this shortcut formula lies the actual conceptual framework which i have discussed to you with the previous slides so they are a ready reckoner that is okay that will make your life simple that will make help you that will, that will help you in making some more complicated uh, uh, numericals or some more complicated uh, uh, conditions wherein the p is huge the i is uh, again the, the rate of interest is quite high and most importantly the n is quite high so when the i is i is more the amount is quite complicated or the amount of p is quite complicated and the number of n for which you need to calculate the future value is large at the same time over there it becomes quite a tedious job to calculate the f1 f2 f3 till number of years it will um, involve a lot of time effort and the and the probability of getting into some errors becomes very glaring so it is and under those conditions it is better to refer to the tables which is at our disposal and we can simply uh, pick and choose the required value and multiply against no matter how complicated the p is there and we shall be arriving at the fn but that is a different story altogether but the actual logic behind the construction of those table and actually how exactly one is one dollar is uh, is changing into its uh, into its value across various uh, uh, sets of i and various sets of n behind that logic lies the conceptual framework which i just tried to make you understand so it was only yesterday for four years and, I, and the i i is also a very benign rate but in the real life decisions are not so simple in the real life the present value happens to be it runs into a huge a humongous amount the i is quite complicated the n the number of years into consideration is also quite large because obviously we have seen whenever investments are being made by by corporations they are into huge i mean they, they are just a big amount for such a huge number it is always advisable to refer to the ready-made tables and with the help of which uh, we can arrive at the future value but the conceptual framework is the same which i just talked with you the cbf uh, for one dollar can be referred readily from the cbf tables and can be used to calculate the future value of any given amount for any given time period a closer look at the term one plus i to the power of n or the cbf for one dollar shall reveal why compounding has an additive or a value augmenting uh, augmenting property now student it is a very important point i want to discuss over here that till now i am sure you have understood that how exactly compounding is really working wonders in the world of finance and in the world of finance in the world of uh, um, uh, stocks and bonds whatever returns we are getting it is it is always uh, assumed that it is being reinvested back into the corpus and that too, uh, that too as a compound uh, as a as a matter of compounding in professional life also when uh, we are trying to save something when we are trying to put some amount in a mutual fund or we are trying to put an amount with a uh, uh, with a savings bank it is always assumed that whatever interest we are earning thereupon it is being compounded it is uh, it, it is being reinvested at a compounding uh, at a compounding rate of interest with the help of which the future amount the future corpus which we are building that becomes quite huge so the thing is that 
why is it so that uh, that the term 1 plus i to the power of n is adding in value so what actually is happening the first thing was that what what we saw there are two reasons for this the first reason being the uh, unlike my uh, unlike our simple interest in the case of compounding it is the original p upon which the interest is being earned and whatever interest is being earned on the existing principal that interest is being added back to the principal rather than taking it out rather than consuming the interest part we are leaving alone the interest back into the uh, into the fund itself which is being added to the principal and the new principal or the opening principal at the open at the open of the second year becomes the existing principal plus the interest there on so the actual uh, principal with which we start every passing new year it is always more than with what we started at the last year i once again repeat it basically happens so the two reasons the first reason is that due to the power of reinvestment and adding it back to the principal due to the property of the interest being added back to the existing principal whatever principal we are starting off in a new year that is always it is bound to be more than the principal with which we started at the last year so obviously when with every passing year the interest with which we are starting against which we want to multiply the i that itself is higher then obviously it goes without saying that when a new i is being calculated and then added back to an already increased principal the resultant principal by the end of the close of the at that particular year is bound to be higher secondly it has been raised uh, we are saying that uh, we, we can just see that in the equation 1 plus i to the power of n the, the the term 1 plus i has been raised to an exponential power of n it has been raised to the power of n so it means what the moment it has been raised to the power of n obviously it goes on increasing like suppose 1 plus i has been raised to the power of 3 it means what it is 1 plus i into 1 plus i into 1 plus i raised to the power of 4 means what 1 plus i into 1 plus i into 1 plus i into 1 plus i so it means what higher the n higher the n more the power goes up the, the exponential the exponential quotient it simply goes up and whatever is being earned it is being added back and and the actual figure goes multiplying as a result of which the resultant amount becomes quite very high same goes with the case that when a variable there is i interest rate so when interest rate is increasing it means what it means when, when the interest rate is on a higher side it means the higher interest is being enjoyed on the existing principle and that higher interest which has been enjoyed on the existing principle after adding it back to the principle the new principle uh, swells up higher and this continues for n number of years this continues for n number of exponential years it means what so higher the i and higher the n if suppose the i is high as well as the n is high it means this this additional benefit or this benefit of i increasing the, i mean earning or generating a new return or a higher return for p this increasing property goes not only for one year or two years but for a larger number of n so the earning of an higher higher interest the earning of an higher return and then adding and then it the same being adding added back to the principal this continues for n number of years and if the n is higher so this benefit goes on for a longer time frame thereby creating a huge corpus at the end of the nth year which acts as a future value of the present investment which is growing by i percent uh, rate of interest for n number of years so one thing is over here the entire process becomes quite smooth the entire process becomes quite yielding the entire process becomes quite uh, uh, i mean uh, rewarding in nature only the condition is that whatever interest is being is being earned the assumption is that whatever interest is being earned on the principal or even on the new on, on the new principal that interest should be left alone in the fund or that that it, that interest should not be taken out because if that interest is taken out it means what that the fund, the firm or the individual is not having any more interest which which is there to be added back to the, to the original principle so in order to the in order to make compounding really work in our favor it becomes quite quintessential it becomes quite staple it becomes quite important that whatever interest is being earned on the principle it should be added back to the principle so that the new principle might swell up goes up into the value than its predecessing principle so uh, it becomes highly imperative that whatever interest is being earned that interest should not be touched that interest should not be taken out it should be kept on in the corpus itself so that this additive effect can go up to a higher higher degree and if the i is high as well as if the n to the, to the raised to the power of n number of years is high it means for a longer duration the i shall be to the other principal shall be earning a higher interest and that interest upon being reinvested in uh, reinvested into the principal shall be generating a higher next year and year and close 
closing amount which will again become a higher opening amount for the for the next year and this process shall be going on for a longer duration of ed thereby taking the future value at a very higher level obviously students if suppose even if i i staying constant i staying constant and the p be, uh, and the p being the same across if you're taking two conditions in which the first year the p 1 plus i suppose, uh, suppose the i is 10% it is increasing for 3 years and for the second condition p being p being the same and 1 plus i again being the same that is that is uh, for 10% if that is if uh, if it is going ahead for 10 years obviously the um, obviously the p is same the i is also and the is also identical under both the condition but still the future amount which we shall be obtaining at the end of the 10th year shall be way higher than what we shall be obtaining at the end of the third year what is the reason behind that the reason is is not very difficult to understand it is simply because of the fact that in the in the prior case where i has been raised to the power of 3 years it means that the benefit of i being reinvested back into the principal and thereby creating a newer higher principal a newer and a higher principle this benefit goes on only for 3 years while in the second year p being identical as well as the i being identical and the i being earned and reinvested back into the principal thereby making it a higher amount and this benefit goes on not for 3 years but for 10 years so although the i is identical under both the condition the p is identical under both the condition only only by the virtue of the fact that this reinvestment and the the reoccurring of a higher interest and then it is the same being added back to the principal this is going on for a higher number of years that is for 10 years thereby generating or thereby creating a benefit of a larger corpus even though under both the conditions compounding is taking place so my dear students under both the conditions always keep in mind that uh, your i and uh, and your n that plays a very crucial role if both i and n is n is a uh, high in number suppose that the interest rate is, is higher and the number of years into question are also higher then it is simply going to work a tremendous amount of a uh, magic it is going to be a very huge amount that is going to be earned even if the i is not high but even if this process goes on for a higher degree of an uh, of an n still the amount accumulated at the end of the nth number of uh, of year shall be quite high than what we are starting so in any case in the world of finance this con the concept of compounding uh, of, of the of, uh, ascertainment of the future value with the help of the compound interest part takes a very important role and students this particular term that is 1 plus i raised to the power of n this the effect becomes just the opposite when we shall be discussing your present value so I hope you all are clear with the fact that how exactly 1 plus i to the power of n is really creating magic and how it is uh, it is helping in creating a huge, a bigger corpus against the P which we are investing today with a motive of earning an i which is as per the common interest formula across n number of years at the end of which we wish to see the final amount which we are, uh, uh, final, the final growth of the amount which we are investing right now. So the future value of a lump sum, the concept discussed till now can be extended to compute the futures value of a different cash flow pattern that is the lump sum and annuity and a sinking fund transfer I have already discussed that the basic concepts remain the same but the same concept can be used because we all know that the cash flow pattern for any company is not just the same sometimes there may be certain lump sum payments or receipt sometimes there may be some fragmented payments or, or receipt sometimes there may be certain uneven cash flow pattern sometimes there may be certain annuities sometimes there may be certain sinking fund transfers we shall be taking up each and every various kind of the cash flow in details as we as we proceed but till now one thing is for sure that whatever concept whatever concept we have tried to develop whatever structure we have tried to build it is a very structure upon which all the further concepts lie now again the same thing students just a quick recap the future value of a lump sum any one time receipt or payment of cash at any point of time during the year is known as a lump sum the future value of a lump sum can be calculated by using both the methods that is the conceptual method as well as the straightforward method wherein we use the compounded value factor of a lump sum formula we, we refer to the tables wherein future value of one dollar occurs across various number of years and various rates of interest uh, have been ready made provided to us we just need to pick it from there the required rate of interest for n number of years and we need to multiply the value with the existing p as to arrive at the fn or the future value at the end of the nth year the elaborated formula can be applied when the amount holds future value needs to be calculated is small along with a low interest rate and lesser number but in, but in real life situations it is always better to bank upon the ready-made tables obviously students we have already discussed this point that when the amount in question is quite low when the rate of interest is quite small and the n number of years are not too very large over there we can go we can calculate the, the future value 
for each number of years separately so as to arise at the future at the future value at the end of the nth year but where where the amount in question is too very high and where the i is quite demanding and the n is for a quite a longer stretch, stretch of time it is it is advisable to avoid any kind of an erroneous calculation it is advisable to fall back upon the ready made future value tables now in such a case one has to take help for a cv uh, the uh, component value table which i have just discussed for a prompt and a error free calculation in our next session we shall be trying to understand the calculation of the future value of a lump sum with the help of a simple example happy learning students thank you